Hello everyone, this is the second part of the two-part video series where I have completed the table view and implemented the detail view as well. The table now features complete CRUD operations. Let me demonstrate the full features here. You can already see a few entries here. Let me add one more entry very quickly. If you have seen the first part, then you know that it allows you to add multiple form groups like this. The form has been submitted successfully. And you can see the recorded entry here. Let me also show the connected spreadsheet. This is where the data is recorded. Back to the application. You can click this down arrow to reveal the actions buttons. Clicking the down arrow will also reveal all the tables corresponding to nested form groups. If you don't want this to appear here, you can comment out the code responsible for this behavior. I will show that later in the code walkthrough. You can click this view button to open a nice detailed view. Use delete icon to delete the selected item. And here you can see the item has been deleted successfully. Let's try editing this by clicking this pencil icon. Hit Save. And here you can see the updated record. Notice the URL. It ends with a question mark followed by admin equal to RTX4. This secret will be known to the spreadsheet owner only, and it can be changed easily by the owner of the connected spreadsheet. So basically, it's an admin URL, and you can see the mode on the top right corner also. This will give you edit and delete rights. Now let's refresh the URL after removing those. Now you don't see the Add button. Edit and Delete buttons are also gone, so this has basically become a read-only table that you can share publicly also. Now let me show you how different pieces are connected to which part of the code. I will open the application and code side by side. First, let's see what we have got in the code.js file. Now, if you don't need separate URL for admin and public view, then simply comment out or remove this line. Better would be to make it an empty string. Moving to index.html. By collapsing a few blocks, you can see different sections. This is for the navbar. This is for the CRUD table. This is for the form modal that is connected to add new button. And this one is for the detail view. In the table view, you can see several column tags to render columns. Here, the fields attribute should exactly match with the name attributes that you have defined in the form inputs. Let me show that to you. Down here, you can observe the name attributes in the input tags. And these are in the nested input as well. These should match with the nested table also. Back to the table section. Notice the column for the expense amount. 
I am using the sum total and currency modifier to get the formatted expense amount. You will find these modifiers in the filters block. This is for the expanded detail which you see when you click the down arrow. Notice total at the end of the nested table also. This is to show you how you can put any content inside the expanded row by modifying and manipulating the props received by each row. If you don't want this, and you are rather satisfied with the detailed view, then you can remove this block or comment it out to make it cleaner. Moving on to the form section. Please watch the previous part for a code walkthrough of the form section. I will post its link in the description. Moving to Detail View section. Here you can see I have mentioned all the keys that match with the name attributes in the form section. You can change the order of these keys or omit any of them if you don't want it to show up here. It uses for loop to iterate through the keys. Then it checks if the key is expenses. We know that expenses contain an array of items, and thus we render them inside a table. Be mindful of these fields like category and amount. It should match with name attributes of the input fields inside repeatable form groups. If the key is date, then we render it as a formatted date string. Items corresponding to the other keys will be rendered simply as label and read-only input. Overall, this project is relatively small. It contains only two files. I will post the links to the references used in the project. You can read them to understand the code better. Now, most importantly, how to set this up for you. First of all, make a copy of this spreadsheet from the link given in the description below. Then open the script editor by going to Extensions and then App Script. This will open the editor in the next tab. You must change this admin secret. Then we need to deploy this code and get those URLs so that we can open the application. For that, click on this Deploy button and choose a new deployment. Then choose Web App as deployment type. You can type anything in the description, like version 1. Select me in the Execute As section. In Who has access, choose anyone. Then click on Deploy. This will take time. For the first time, it will ask for authorization. Go ahead and grant all the required permission. After the deployment is completed, you will be presented with the web app URL. Copy this URL. Now open the copied URL. And here you go. Everything is working as expected. This is a public URL, and it won't have Add, Edit, and Delete buttons. Now to get the admin URL, append the URL with a question mark followed by admin equal to your admin secret. Hit Enter. And here you got your admin URL. This will have all the CRUD action buttons. Suppose you make any changes, then you need to redeploy after saving the script. For that, click on Deploy, followed by Manage Deployment. Then choose the latest deployment on the top, and then click on this pencil icon to edit it. Choose New Version, and then click on Deploy. This will give you back the same previous URL, but now it will point to the latest code. If you are actively developing and need a Devi URL, then click on Deploy followed by Test Deployments to get the Dev URL. That's it. If you liked the video, then please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.